Hi, I'm Patricia from Trisha's Lovely Creations. Today we're going to work on lapis. And I'm going to show you how to make it and stick it to beads and uh, make a cup bracelet. We're going to need a really expensive tool called the butter knife. It's just your blade. Your blank cut, a cutter, some finger coats as I call them. You're going to need blue glitter primo, ultramarine primo, translucent primo, and black primo, and some scrap clay. Here's one of them that I did before, and you can see all the colors and the gold leaf mixed in there, which I just realized I forgot to add that. We're going to need gold leaf, so it's a good thing I put this up here, but you can see how everything is all mixed together really well, and get that nice, beautiful contrast of everything, And it'll look great on beads and the bracelet or whatever else you decide to make. Pendants. Whatever. Sky's the limit. Forgot to turn my camera back on. Okay, I've already cut the ultramarine. Uh, you want about a stick of this. Yeah, before I forget when I'm talking about a stick of it out of the package. Uh, I got this idea from Sculpey Universe um, from Amy Corrick. So this is her baby, not mine. I am just going with it and doing other little things with it. I like to just shove it in, however, and let's see, I like a little more glittery, so I'm going to put more in it than she says. Uh, if you're wondering why I keep my stuff in my packages, I know a lot of you don't. Um, I didn't at one time, and when I got into it really good. I went to go get another color that I liked, and I didn't know the name of it. And so I ended up leaving the store with nothing and trying to find the package at home so I could get the correct one. And so from then on, I've always kept my clay in its package, and it stays for me nice and clean and soft and whatever I need it. It's right there, and I can always check the name. I always have that on hand because I forget real easy. Okay, so there we got that. Now that we have your ultramarine and your blue glitter, we need to mix them together. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back. Okay, now I'm back and hopefully you can see this in my blue. I mixed them, but I didn't mix them up all the way. You can still see some of the ultramarine there, and then some of the, the blue glitter there. And so it's kind of mixed in, but it's kind of not. And then I'm going to make a little log out of it. That way we can cut it up easier. a lot of that. I know it seems like a lot, but I do a lot with it, so. Because I love it. Now I'm going for the translucent. And she don't put very much of that in there, but I like to have quite a bit, so. 
again go with what you like you're the one that's got to live with it so make it your way that I'm gonna condition that and I'll be right back okay now that that's conditioned and I think I forgot to tell you you do need your thicker blade for cutting this stuff up I think I forgot to add that in the beginning but yes you will need that okay so I play with it I get into another log I guess it's the kid in me that likes to roll it into logs. And I'm going to go ahead and do the black now and you can set it aside. I like to do a pretty good sheet because I never know how much I'm covering. And I'm going to condition that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I have rolled my Primo Black out on a number four on my pasta machine. Set that off to the side, and I left some black in my towel. You're going to see me use these a lot. I love my Scott's blue towels. I use them on everything. They are almost lint free, so I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and chop this up. I like to kind of do it separate. Just me thing again. A little weird that way. Don't ask me why I angle it. it probably really doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all going to be chopped up into a pile anyway. Okay. Move that out of the way. I hope that was where you could see it. Like I said, this is pretty much my first video tutorial. So bear with me. I'm hoping I get better over time. Come on, get in there. out of the way. Bring the blues back over. And it all stick into itself. That's okay. We're going to chop it up a little bit more. No biggie. I kind of like to scatter the, well not clump it like that, but scatter it throughout the blue. Up. And I'm going to chop it some more. 
And I've got clay going everywhere. Smudge it, all that good stuff there. Okay, now the fun part. Okay, gold leaf. Some little pieces left, I'll put it on there first. Uh, don't breathe. If you've never worked with the gold leaf before, just the littlest breath to make it all fly away. Well, I thought I was going to use these little pieces. They don't want off of there. Hmm. get unstuck from the gold leaf. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty. Done. Now that black sheet that we made is going to go over the top of this. that down in there a little better. Okay. Yep, it's gonna fit. I like to stretch it out just a little bit. But it's gonna fit. Goldie. Trying to get away there. to use my crafts my my exacto knife. Make sure it's all good on there. Sorry, I don't mean to get too quiet. I get real quiet when I'm concentrating. Trying right, not to get into that blue. Alright, there we go. Now make our lines. Okay, that's 
where the expensive butter knife comes in. Designs. That's what I like to do. Okay. That's good, I think. Take and squish it all back together. see what we got. Now for this part you might want to have um, like some paper down to put your pieces on so they don't stick to your tile. If you don't want them sticking. Sometimes they're hard to get up and they might tear. So grab you a piece of paper, some parchment paper, some wax paper, whatever you got, whatever you prefer. And we're going to take our we're going to take our tissue blade and slice in and see what we got. Here we go. Beautiful. I love it. Makes me happy every time I do it. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh my God, some black sticking on there gold leaf sticking on there. That's okay. And that was a little thick. But there you go. You can see how you get really pretty designs and how that black and gold just mixes through there. Gorgeous. Probably could have done it a little more on that side, but that's okay. It'll work. It'll work. So, I think now we will roll some beads. Okay, now what I've done was I rolled my scrap clay out on a number five. That's where I like it. Uh, makes the beads small, but not too small. You can roll them out on whatever you like. And then I have my little cutter here, my acrylic cutter, which is about, well, about as big as my pinky there. So that's the one I like to use for my smaller beads. And we'll just cut them out. Okay, there's a few there. Take that. Roll it up. Oh, nice and squishy. We need a bitty tiny bead. But it works. Now if you want them bigger, by all means make them bigger. I got some bigger ones in mine too. Okay. Now what I like to do is with these is trim off that black. I like the black but I don't want that much black on my bead. So I'm going to lay it down. And we should make it go a little bit longer. And then I'm just gonna trace around that, cutting off that block. And I don't know if you don't want to sit here and watch me do this, it's boring, so I will be right back. Hi, I'm back. I got the black trimmed off of there. I took one the bigger pieces. It was kind of chunky and I rolled it through my pasta machine on a number one which is my thinnest setting. That way it's more uniform. 
and then we're just going to take it and apply it to the bead that we made. Put in the shot here, that would help you out a lot, right? Just going to wrap it around there. Turn off some of it off. And it's really hot in here right now, so I've got goop. This is what I've got. that little crack. Some more color, some gold. It's going to be black. I'd rather have the gold sitting there. Ah, and you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Nope, because I was paying attention to what was in front of me instead of checking the camera. I promise I will get used to this, guys. Just give me time. to go back and forth so that it don't start swirling. So I'll try to keep everything in place. And no swirls. Make sure that it's round. I like doing this in my hand. If I do it on the table, I push too hard and I just get a misshapen bead. That looks good. Beautiful. So we make another? Let's do that again. I got my little piece that I cut out. So make that ball. And then we're just going to lay that on the wall. Wrap it around. Take this upper piece. Tear it off. fill in with this one. Let's see. Something like black and gold there. Yes, I totally do not have finger coats on. I'm usually pretty good at this part. It's when I start uh, pinching it down into a flat circle that I'm going to need it. And when I do my squares. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to put on the finger coats, or finger jackets, whatever you want to call them. Because now we're going to do the round flat beads. 
and this will help steer off some of those fingerprints. Now if you push really hard, you will see your fingerprints, which I have a tendency to do. So you want to be really careful with that. I got one more cut out here. I'll take that one. Roll it up in the bowl. Take our balloon here. I'm doing it again to you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I got to turn my phone down. I guess we got more than a pinch. That'll work anyway. Just checking around it to make sure I got every inch of that covered. Looks like. Well, that one went all wonky. Try to go lightly. Lightly is not my strong suit. A little off there. You just keep playing with it until it's where you like it. Real lightly. Pinch, pinch, pinch each turn. Pinch and turn, pinch and turn, real light. And I like that. That's perfect for me. Gorgeous. So there's that one. I'm going to cut out another one. And I'm going to show you how I make my square one. And then we'll move on to the bracelet for the next video. Clay, make a ball or a football. Mix 
Here we go. Closer. Put the arm in here. Alright, let's cover him up. Doing it again, guys. Sorry about that. all covered and it is now we're going to roll it out just like before two different directions so it don't go squirrely okay and now just like we made our flat round one we're going to make our little flat square one pretty much the same way. You really don't need to make sure that it's perfectly round for this part. Slightly pinching, going around, making a circle, just like the circle one. Okay. Now we're going to pinch the sides. Itty bitty square. Itty bitty. The square showing up. Pretty itty bitty square. And the other side. And pinch it down. I know, I get quiet. I get real quiet when I'm concentrating. I'm sorry. Keep pinching. It'll eventually get there. It will go where you want it to. You just gotta keep playing with it. Really, really good. I like my corners rounded. If you don't, don't mess with them. But they're nice and sharp. I like mine rounded. And there we go. And that's how you get the square. Okay. Now, what I like to do when mine are baked is I like to drill them like this through the end to end or down the middle like this. I like to have both in there. But that's what I do. Okay. I'm going to show you how I drill my holes. I use this tiny Dremel here because I suck and I just cannot make straight holes with a push drill, hand drill. So I use 
my little drill master. Today I'm just going to dip them in some pledge uh, multi-service. So I like to string them on these little wires. I just curl the end. Take some two beads. Actually I don't think that's what they're called. But it's what I call them. For the bottom, I like to put two on. I'll dip that in my cup of pledge and I'll hang that to dry. Now they'll be all shiny and pretty. Good to go. That's how I do my beads. Here's 
here I thought I would show you real quick some of what I was working on last night. I did some test ones. These ones here are the red and gold tiger eye. These ones here are ones that I was looking at doing a lighter color for the snowflake obsidian. And this one I was just messing around and practicing my lentils. And this is the one I did in the eyeshadow. And the pledge stuck to it. So I'm happy about that. They're nice and shiny. Well they were shiny before I even did it. But now they're super shiny. Awesome sauce. Almost looks like it didn't go there though. Feels like it did, just don't look like it. And I dipped these twice. These are only dipped once. I'm gonna take them off there and see how nice they look. Okay. Taking them all off the wires. And I just really love how this one came out. It's so cool. And like I said, I was just just messing around practice with my lentils didn't roll as much as I wanted, but that side did. Maybe I just didn't have that much on that side to roll. I guess that's how that works. That side is really wicked. I love it. These ones came out good. For some reason, these two didn't roll at all, really. I don't know what in the world I did with those, but they didn't roll at all. They come out looking nice. I want to make earrings out of these. Shaped just a little different. These three, I'm gonna do necklace and earrings with these. And I've got these. I uh, want to put these on the necklace. So I gotta make more. And I can show you how to do that too if you want. Um, just let me know in the comments below if you want me to do the uh, eyeshadow earrings or eyeshadow earrings, eyeshadow beads. If you want me to do the eyeshadow beads, here's close up. A little focus. And shimmer. Ah, a really nice shimmer. It's not really great. Um, but yeah, if you want, I can do a tutorial on these eyeshadow beads. Let me know in the comments below, please. Okay, and then I did, <coughs> like I said, the uh, tiger eye, red and gold. And they come out really gorgeous. I can't believe the shine on them. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So I think I'll be adding these to the tutorial. So that will be coming up. Before you know it, we'll be doing these. They're going to be great. Alright, and that's all I have for you today. Thank you. Bye-bye.